six different crashes at the moment i've done a complete system restart all of the config files have been flushed from pubg i'm really hoping this works so i'm really sorry about this fingers crossed we'll be able to get the rest of game one and then we'll get games two through six as normal uh we've just actually had versus pro eliminated early on this is phase number four the circle is in between la Julera and chumacera We've got Entropic versus Mutity in... Oh, actually, in Chumacera, and they have to come out, so this is going to be worth watching. On board with Noick at the moment, whiffing against Granula, which is not good. Managing to get the knock onto Laosh anyway, but uh, the grenade will be able to get him out. Oaksik punishing Noick for that mistake there. We can see the Molotov is going to finish Noick off. Nice and safe for Mutiny to come in here. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. And the edge of Chumacera... will be mutinies to move in if you take a look at where they are they've more or less got free reign over here ding though are going to be moving in against tmf let's see if Xerxes is able to find senya he can't which leaves only preel alive for ding at the moment this is team misfits on the edge here by the way if i turn the uh, x-ray off you can see that the smokes are actually obscuring a lot of that view although Zertzi might have an opportunity dalek is also coming across the top of that ridge great grenade there knocks Zertzi and finishes danilo this is gonna mean it is a 1v1 Zertzi, by the looks of things is probably gonna bleed out with the blue zone moving in as well oh the game was threatening to crash not quite though and Ding manages to get in, but only just Dalek picking up a couple of first aids dropped by his teammate. And Team Misfits will continue with just a single player alive. But they have got four kills on the board here in game number one. So that's something. That is something. Faze now needing to rotate around Digital Athletics. Not having a good time so far, though. Fex and 8C both going down. Pixelic or Pixelol today has a really good position on Vex. However, they have to get into circle. And that's what Fuzzface and co are hoping to prevent right now. They can't do that though when they're being third party. That's the adept from up north. They're now looking to try and gatekeep digital athletics out from phase number five. Still eight teams and 20, te uh, 20 left. No, seven teams and 20 alive. Changing second by second on the 21 minute mark of this game. Here comes Xiong and Vard. This is going to be a delightful combination. One that many, many people will have been looking forward to. Xiong has, of course, continued to play PUBG, but we haven't necessarily seen him at the highest level for a little while. No doubt he's been playing a lot of games and has been scrimming hard. Today is a good opportunity for us to see how well this new look Digital Athletics team is going to do. Two kills and four players left alive at the moment, but they are going to be coming up against the Adepts on the West. And Skade have taken a position towards the middle of the circle. Anonymous standing a little bit too still. Xiong manages to get a good... I think that was a headshot with the midi. And underneath the car means that a beautiful second hit allows Xiong to get the knock. Manages to finish off the kill as well. So that's one more point on the board for DA. So far, so good. Phase 6, Donuts. Nothing too much to write home about. The Adepts technically have long building left, which is going to be useful. Na'Vi potentially had this compound here on the edge, but they weren't using it anyway. They're completely fine. Na'Vi as the team of four are going to be quite exciting to see how they do here. The Adepts, though, have got themselves in a good position. And of course, the New Look Digital Athletic Squad are all going to be in this final circle. Haven't got room for all of them, though. The Adepts looking like they've chilled out a little bit at the moment. They found Na'Vi and want to fight them instead. The Adepts basically need to avoid becoming a sandwich. Let's be honest. That, that's, that is the Adepts' entire goal right now. Don't be the sandwich. Also, I'm doing a he heroic, a massive disservice here. They're now up to six kills and Beamy just got two. Just beamed two members of Mutiny down. They're looking for Na'Vi as well. They need to think about rotating in. Let's see how they're going to do that. T-Bone's got a playable dip. And this dip is probably sheltered from Na'Vi. But I'd be very, very scared for the remaining members of Mutiny. And potentially if DA choose to move around the south side of this circle. 
they could come in here as well. I didn't think there would be that much in the way of disruption here. I honestly, I didn't think Heroic would have had a place to play, so I'm completely wrong about that, which is fine. I'm looking forward to seeing Beamy and T-Bone do fantastically well. Misa, right next to this drop. The Graza is going to be useful. T-Bone is seen on the right-hand side. Needs to get those shots off. He does, though, and that stayed eliminated. Top four now coming in. T-Bone, though, the last surviving member for Heroic. They have got seven kills, a decent number of points on the board. Not as useful as it was, was of course, because uh, we are playing with the most chicken rule, even in scrims now. Uh, Digital Athletics holding the south side of the circle. They have chosen not to rotate into the Adepts. So the Adepts are going to be playing around Na'Vi. This means that Alia is likely to be one of the first players to go run into them on the north side. There'll be questions asked about whether they should rotate in or whether they should rotate through. The Adepts have taken a good amount of space here. And Alia will want to be going around the edge. Being very cautious here. Alia is normally the first one to peek this next. Like, I would expect Alia to be here right now, to be honest. Um, but they're playing this reasonably cautious. There's a reason why they're at this level and I'm not. Vard spots out Namwa. Corsac is very close to the center of the circle as well. And we have to be a little bit mind... I mean, look at this position. Shielded from Na'Vi. But if anyone peeks Corsac from behind, I'm a little worried that Pixelic will spot him. Oh, so close. So close. Does Vard see him? No, Vard's busy looking at Na'Vi. Corsac must be visible, surely, to Pixelic in just a second. I don't think they realize that there's someone in between them. They're focusing on the edge instead. Corsac might get away with this. Corsac might... I can't believe Corsac's going to get away with this, but I think he will. Take a look at this. Removing the x-ray vision. Corsac is plainly visible to the naked eye. But Digital Athletics are just not quite peaking enough. Phase 7. Moving towards DA as well. They have cover, but they're also on the low ground. So they might want to think about spreading out and grabbing some of these sight lines. Digital Athletics are fine. T oh, poor T-Bone. T-Bone's getting absolutely hammered, I think by Na'Vi at the moment. Melman spotted. The problem is, Melman is one of four. Don't accidentally walk into the Molotov. That was very close. Here comes Quizzy. He gets a bit of damage done to him as well, but T-Bone cannot get away. That is it. We're now into our top three. It's the Adepts, Na'Vi, and Digital Athletics. Looking back towards where T-Bone used to be, but he's now gone. Na'Vi, they've got the highest ridge at the moment. Digital Athletics have the entirety of the south side of the circle. And the Adepts are moving across on the west. Except for Corsac, who has still got his massive position here. Here we go. Vard managing to find and finish off Melman. Na'Vi now on the edge. Example is about to take some damage as well. John might be able to get a ridiculous amount of damage done. He does. One frag grenade. Oh my god. And the gr second grenade from Vard to follow up means that Na'Vi completely eliminated in third place. Was not expecting that with four players still left alive from the Digital Athletics. This is going to be insane. It's a 4v3. The Adepts absolutely are disadvantaged here. But Corsac has a really good spoiler position. We cannot count out Corsac. If he's able to get a knock or two from that beautiful position here, that's going to be fantastic. Furax with an attempted nade. Not going to work out. If Corsac had a time to push in, now it now is the time. Noki, I believe, is down, so he has to do something to respond. Otherwise, it's a 4v2. That's a great nade. That's a great nade! 
32 damage. Corsac hits the deck. Two members of Digital Athletics now running through. Xiong and Vard going, we want to hunt for you. Flashbang's going out. Southside, that second one might actually hit Corsac. Get spotted. That's it. And Furax is the last surviving member of the Adepts. It's a 4v1. Digital Athletics looking to make it 10 digit kills. Hang on. Furax manages to get the revive and gets a knock onto Pixelog. Are they going to be able to turn this around? It's Furax and Noki versus the world right now. Xiong almost gets the headshot. Doesn't quite. Pixelog still down. Three v two, and I believe this is Uber, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna call them Uber for now. But if they're not, please accept my apologies. Noki finishes Pixelol. This is now permanently three v two. We need to see the flank come in for DA. Noki and Furax both being able to shoot the same target from different angles is what cost DA their player just now. So they're moving around because they don't want that to happen again. Noki is very very close to this player on the edge spots him but he gets down essentially for free noki can now repeak forced to go prone that's the molotov tries to shoot it out of the air nice and bold here comes the smoke aiming for noki but furax gets it the adepts here are playing this slow and steady and they brought this back to a 2v2 what an incredible game this is so far. Noki goes down, though. This is now a 1v2. Furax has done so much work. He needs to do a little bit more. Xiong on the cusp of going down. Manages to get a first aid off. Furax, though, basically in the center of the circle. And it's Digital Athletics that have to push him. Are we going to get DA back up to three men strong? No, we are not. Oh, no, but that headshot might be problematic. Furax has to hit the deck to heal, and he knows that they're going to push in. That is it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Digital Athletics, ladies and gentlemen, will win game number one of tonight's PUBG EU Pro Scrims. Woo! Right. Well, we're basically going to be talking about troubleshooting PUBG, aren't we, in this break?